Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. This is a Marlin 1895 in 4570. Marlins are now owned by Ruger and made by Ruger, and I have to say the quality control and standards of manufacture have gone way up. These things are just a load slicker, a load smoother, and a lot nicer to shoot. Overall length is 946 millimeters or 37 and a quarter inches. Overall weight is 3.3 kilograms or 7.3 pounds. Length of pull is 340 millimeters or 13.4 inches. Review today on the Marlin 1895 SBL. Now, many of you will have seen Marlins in the past. This is the new Marlin. It's a new life. It's a new way. The design is essentially the same, but Marlin have now been bought by Ruger, and Ruger are very keen to inject the fact that they have got a totally new approach to the manufacture of these rifles. And I have to say, from very first encounter, you do get the impression they are very, very much better made. Now, SBL on the 1895. Stands for, very originally, stainless, and it's got the big lever on it, which means you've got huge amounts of space to get your hand in, gloved hand, whatever. Now, in terms of the specification, it's a 19 inch barrel, six round capacity magazine, and you've got a side loading gate here, six in, you can put one in the chamber as well, and then of course, every time you rack that lever, the gun is live. You can manually decock it like that, because of course it's an external hammer, or, there is actually now a safety catch on it, which is a cross bolt safety catch, and click that through there, fire it, and the hammer is actually stopped from hitting the striker 
at the back. You see to put it back on, flick it that side, bang, off it will go. The barrel is cold hammer forged by Ruger, it's 410 stainless steel and the action and the actual lever themselves are 416 stainless and these are machined from forging. So forgings give you the finest grain structure in the steel and of course machining afterwards gives you the most close tolerance, performance and fit to make sure everything goes together correctly. The L in the SBL is the laminate stock, so it's a beautiful grey laminate, we've got lots of checkering, fairly straight hand grip, but it's very quick and intuitive to mount. Length of pull isn't particularly long, it's 340 millimetres, which is 13.4 inches. You don't tend to notice that though, because you can use it with iron sights, or you can use it with a low magnification optic, like this 1.5 to 5 loophole that is on here that the gun was supplied with. Now, this scope is in quick release mounts, and if I take it off, you'll actually notice that the ghost ring rear sight isn't actually fitted on. So I'm just going to pop that off, and the ghost ring rear sight fits on here. So if you pop that in there, straight through like that, you've got a nice glowing green tritium dot at the front to give you really good fast fire performance in any light condition. This is windage and elevation adjustable, but you do need to remove it. It's a shame you can't put it on with the scope, but you could put an artificially high scope mount on there so it would fit still underneath back here. Because I have to say, a ghost string rear sight with that lovely green dot at the front is a very, very fast intuitive aiming solution and it's hard to get it wrong because the circle fits in the ring and it just looks good to use. The action itself is 4 and 6 stainless but the bolt within is steel and it's nickel plated. It's also fluted to give you a really smooth reciprocating stroke and make sure there's no galling or corrosion between the two metal surfaces. Pull weight on the single stage trigger comes in at 1,785 grams which is pound 15 ounces. The trigger is consistent with no creep at all, and at the heavier pull weight, it ideally suits the, you know, the colder climates where you might be wearing gloves, because in the UK we forget, we have a few days a year where it's pretty unpleasant. Some countries in the world have that for weeks or months on end, and you will be hunting with a rifle possibly similar to this, wearing big, thick, heavy gloves, and that is why that big lever gives you all that advantage. And it's another factor as to why you might want a physically large cartridge to load into this port on the side less fumbling with very cold fingertips. Now it is a big thumping calibre, you can see the remnants of the bullets here. Uh, I didn't have any to save really because I only had 20 rounds to review the gun with. The rifle was supplied by Viking Arms and they also supplied the Celeron Bellock ammunition and that 405 grain soft lead tip bullet was doing 1413 feet per second on average which is just over 1700 foot pounds. Um, whether you want to use this as a hunting rifle in the UK is entirely up to you. I could imagine for closer range, big woodland stags perhaps, it will be very, very fast, intuitive, safe to carry gun. Off you go, bang. But in terms of its versatility, it's perhaps a little bit less versatile than a smaller, faster calibre because you have, of course, got quite a curved trajectory, which is not a huge amount different to a 2.2 rimfire. In terms of its actual performance on paper, you can see here some really nice, big, dirty, great holes. And these were the holes where I shot first when I was just setting it up, and then you can see the zeroed holes here. Now, these aren't 100 metres, these are 50 metres, which are considered to be a fairly realistic representative range for the sort of distance you'd hunt with a rifle like this. I don't have any bears around me or any dinosaurs that I could possibly shoot with it, so it's not something I'm going to use in anger in those respects. But in fairness, I, I wasn't actually quite sure whether I'd like this gun or not, and I thought it was maybe a bit weird. I have shot it several months ago at the West London Shooting School, but this was the first time I'd had some really, you know, personal time with it with a precision paper to see what it was like actually in use in my own time. And I do rather like it, actually, because it's very different, but it's 100% functional, it's 100% tool. The muzzle is screw cut 11 16 by 24, so you could actually add a moderator on the end of this if you wanted, or a muzzle brake to cut the recoil. The recoil is quite significant, but it's not actually terrible because the stock actually absorbs it well, it doesn't resonate and it doesn't sort of ring your head. And of course the wooden stock is also, it's nice to hold, it's good and warm. And okay, in a very cold climate, you're gonna have a nice cold metal lever there, but I suspect you'd be wearing gloves anyway. And that's why the B in the big lever bit means you've got loads of space to get in there to use it. You do sort of naturally keep your finger into the front of the trigger guard to make sure when you cycle it, it's not gonna impact on the trigger. But other than that, the gun's actually really enjoyable to shoot and nice to use. 
All the stampings on it and the proof markings have been slightly changed so that they do indicate this is now a Ruger manufactured Marlin, not one of the old school ones. And although you've got the iron sights on it, I do like the addition of the Piccadilly rail because it's kind of, it's quite a modern contrast to what's a very original sort of format of rifle. But it does mean you can put these scopes on them, especially something like a one to six, one to four, something like that. And you get some serious precision aiming solution out of it and it will produce the groups to make you quite happy. Yes, it's not a long range rifle, but it is a very practical rifle and a rather fun rifle. And it's one that not many people will own. You will certainly appear a little bit different if you have one of these. And I have to say, although I was very unsure about it, I really did enjoy using it. The checkering's nice, the stock's nice, the recoil pad is excellent. It's not too spongy. It fits in your shoulder well, gives you nice firm contact, and it softens the blow slightly. It's not one of these horrible squidgy, spongy things that's always kind of bending around in every position. You put it in your shoulder, lock it in place, and it is absolutely firm and solid. So that's a lot of lead that's going to be ringing around in whatever quarry you shoot. We've got lead and we've got copper from the jackets. That will kill things quite substantially well. But like I said, it's not a long range tool. Anyway, what else can I say about it? All the stainless steel fixtures and fittings are very nice. You can actually strip it down. If you actually make sure it's unloaded, half cock it, you can remove the lever take the lever off, you can also slide the bolt completely out, you just need to watch the actual ejector claw doesn't drop out completely and then once it's out you can clean it through the rod like any regular rifle and of course you've got full access to the actual mechanism itself to clean everything inside too. You can do greater disassembly if you want to at home in the workshop or whatever but generally speaking that's going to work fine. Last but not least it's got characteristic red dot now instead of a black dot on the stock inlaid there's a marlin logo on the bottom and it's also got sling swivels or sling studs front and rear to make sure you've got a nice comfortable carry position on this rifle would i have one i don't actually think they're that expensive you have to check your local dealer for your absolute price you're going to really pay because all I could quote you is the recommended retail price on the day to day which in your different markets, different countries is not necessarily going to be applicable. But what I would say is if you fancy one, I would go for it because I do think it's actually a very nice gun to shoot. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell and if you go all the way through to the end of the video, there's a link on screen to get tickets to this year's 2023 British Shooting Show, which also includes car parking. If you do go along to the show, you might even be able to handle this very rifle with this very serial number. I don't imagine there are many of these around. I hope it's there in time and I hope you enjoy looking at it. Right, thank you for watching. Bye for now.